software sometimes instead of making a reference to turn around and yeah. make oh, it yeah. all yeah. come back. So yeah, it's 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 got got state. Yeah. I remember when we were talking about Portland Avenue. Yeah. These are the kinds of things that those of us who did. Well, yeah. at least we got the speed we can I'm sorry? At the end of the, you remember about three or four years ago? Yes, we did have it reduced by five. 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 What we're trying to do is, is talk about calming other kinds of things to waste the slow traffic down and maybe another five miles an hour yeah, or yeah. not. But you know, the white could bear and uh, something else. Like yeah. So. But these things oh, take kind of so long <laughs> to work your way through. Oh, yeah. That's true as well. Five years ago, maybe four or five years ago, going on to this turf bike, and I swear, you know, I, I was there trying to uh, merge into traffic, so I was, you know, looking, and boom, and so my neck was like, a little bit, I was, okay, but I swear that person was there. I circulated what would have been edited this morning. Did you give a chance to see it? Yeah. 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 I'm a little confused with, with it. I have here, Ed Roselli asked if the Budget Committee could not accomplish everything it needed to at the finalized budgets to present to public hearings on the school district. I think what you were asking at the time was, if you don't do it, can we have another meeting or something? Yeah. Like, something like that. Yeah. But it just the way it was worded, I couldn't understand what it. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. What it is is you asked if we couldn't come to a consensus, can we have another meeting afterwards? If we couldn't. I think maybe because we're with, talking about with relation to the school. Yeah. Okay. And I think it was whether or not we needed to have like a week notification, and since it wasn't at a hearing, Suzanne mentioned it could be a twenty-four hour. Have another meeting after today. If it's a meeting, yes, not a public hearing. Right. I, I just remember clarifying that we only need a 24 hours conversation. Mm -hmm. for, for a meeting. For a meeting. Yes, not, not a public hearing. So public is that point, do we need to make that point? Does it, does it help the minutes at all, or do we just scratch that one? Because it's I mean, I'll add, yeah. How, what's the language you want? The, the language that I had was all, all I believe I said at that point was I know that we need 24 hours notice for a meeting. I'll add that in. Okay, 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 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 Thank
and that won't be going on anymore. We'll, we'll, we will assure that. So, so their typical bill, what we were just saying in this is that they typically have a $193 bill and they end up with a $31,000 bill, and so you were just trying to resolve why. And you just explained it. So. Well, it took more than that, though. Right. It, it, it required us to go back to trying to figure out how every bill was generated, and we realized that it wasn't, it, 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 it wasn't perfect. And there were some assumptions that were made. Yep. And that will never happen again. I'm going to say that again. And that we rebuild to when that meter was changed. We recalculated to when that meter was changed. And we now have a system that we can run outside of our system that won't affect our accounting so that we can go back as far as we need to to recalculate it. A lot. It's not that the repair to the generator isn't the big deal. The big deal is that we need to have a backup generator there while we're making the repair. Because if the power went out, we, or we can't have the power go out. We have certain requirements that we have to follow. And one of them is you have to have a backup, bring a backup. So that would be a rental. And, so that, and, and it's three phase, so it's kind of a big deal. And so the context is that. that uh, it's, a, it's an overage in what was projected. Is that what, what, where we got to? Why this came up? And so that's the overage is based on. on well, no, we haven't we not. haven't had the overage yet. You had asked, are there any big things coming up? Oh, coming up. This okay. is one of the big things. Uh, I'll move to accept them once re revised. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Good. All right, we accomplished something. <laughs> <laughs>
just I had a couple comments on the on the schedule I'm posting in minutes. I saw that I, is everybody able to get to the minutes on the on the web, on the website? Because I just yeah. wasn't sure if that was this thing where I have Google, I have Gmail, and so I could get it, and other people couldn't. But everybody's able to get yeah, it. Yeah, I got Thank it. Again, thanks to my wife. Okay. I tried, but it told me I didn't have permission once I went through and created. So they didn't stuff. share with you. Well, no, if you don't have a Gmail account, then it's going to send out a request for it. It says that you could use your phone. It gave me that option, so then I went through and I did mine, so, which was a, a your, Yahoo. What's your account? Oh, Yahoo. Yeah, you got it. So it said I could, so I went all the way through to the end, and then it said no. It said that I didn't have permission from your end. Um, so someone should have gotten an just send, Just send a request for access. I ran out of time. Yeah. With the yeah. So if there's a thing that's said right there that pops up that you can say request, right? Yes. Okay. And so then we'll, we'll just try it again. Yeah. And uh, I would love it if there was a, a version of the minutes we could have in one place we could all could edit and not have to print them out and have the five versions. But if we do that, we have to convert it over to Google Docs, I guess. Can you share it differently, Suzanne? For, um because there's think like three options, you can view, comment, or write. You could recommend. Yeah, I mean, I think um, the we can set the budget committee to be able to write. I, I just need somebody you know, to say, yes, that's okay to do for the minutes folder. But the other thing is, the document, in order to use that tra the tracking feature that Google provides, the document has to be a Google Docs. And I, I don't see, you know, at first, it, it's like, it's different. It's but it really works the same way as Microsoft Word. So if you keep it as a Google Doc, mm -hmm. then you could just you, you know, just edit while it's right there on the screen. Edit then. under recommend. Yeah. There's a some I don't know if all uh, displays are the same depending on how you're getting into the drive, whether it's on an iPad or uh, a, a, a browser on a, on a full computer station. But somewhere it says mode or something, so it can be just editing. In which case, it's not going to take. It's not going to keep track of what you've done, or underneath that it says recommend, and that's what you want to choose. Okay. Choose recommend, then if you're going through it, you can either cross something out, add something, or you can highlight something and put a comment. Okay. And it will have whoever, the name of the user who's doing that. So so I, I suggest that we make it so that the board can have access to, to that folder. Yeah. So, so they only have read access to Thing. I don't, you know, I don't know, but I go back and look, and I'll give them, I'll give this group right access to this folder. I'll let us know what happens. And if you don't hear from me, please do just remind me. Okay, yeah. And what you would have to do, Corey, is make sure that it's in a, it's a Google Doc. What I do is I write it in Microsoft Word, and then I just copy and paste the entire thing into. That's fine. Instead, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's that works as right. long as the. Yeah, mine came up in Google Docs. Yeah. yeah. So that that's. I just have to change format, I and mean, sometimes the format again. Gets changed a little so bit. Ne next time we'll give it a try. We yeah. just yeah. have one that's on. We don't have to circulate it by email. Yeah. No, we know it isn't done. I, well, I, I, I paid money for Microsoft Words. I'm going to use it. And then we'll correlate you know when they're up and they'll send us all the link yeah. to them. Yeah, that yeah. yeah I, I think. I like, assume that you have the right access. Yeah, okay. um, like you did before, yeah. um, just send an email to the whole board that the draft minutes are up and then we can. Mm -hmm. You can all know and go in and include a link to the document right there to make it easy okay. for everyone yeah. that way yeah. to navigate through the crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next item I had was the 2018-2019 meeting schedule, and I've circulated that uh, with some red line edits. I think the changes mostly were just putting some more definition on what the meetings actually were. There was one date that changed because Suzanne had pointed out that I had something happening before another thing incorrectly, so I corrected that date. Um, as far as, I think, Suzanne, you mentioned that you, uh, in an email after the meeting some idea of switching the order of one meeting or the other. Do you recall that? Or did you no, I did not. I'm so sorry. I don't have it in front of me. That's fine. Um, I think because, because the way we're doing... Um, the uh, SP2, we have two weekends to do the deliberative sessions, and um, we're doing, I think, school is first and town is second. And I thought you sent an email saying maybe it would be better to do town first just for the, for
for your for the Yeah, I mean, we, it, it, it's just a fact of life that we don't have the same kind of administrative support as the district has. And so it does take us longer to get these things out. So um, I, I don't know whether that messes up the school. I don't know whether it was a title. I'm look, sorry. I don't know whether it messes up the school. <laughs> <laughs> Old habits. Why would you do the first? I'm just going to look that way when you look this way. So. Yeah. Well, because because then you have to get everything finalized. It, 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 so you have to take the changes that were made or suggested, and then you have to finalize the documents, get things entered into the DRA's website. It all has to. So it gives you work. a couple. Of and it gives us a little more time to fit into the deadline. But it doesn't. Oh, I see. So it's the time after the time. after the I think that's delivery what, session that you need an extra week. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we so needed it both sides, but yeah, you know. <laughs> I, I have no problem with, with that. Does anybody have any concerns of just switching, switching those around? The school has more practice. So. Are, are we talking the, the February date? <coughs> it's just in February. As long as it's not the December date, there's no problem. No, I think it's for the when the deliberative session is The actual session deliberative is session. Yeah, that should be okay for the school as, as long as it's, yeah, because it doesn't even go into the second week in February, I don't think so. It should be fine. But if it comes just before our vacation week, that could be difficult. So again, we have to check vacation weeks. As, if Emily has the dates, you know, we, we can uh, discuss them um, at our board. If you can send them along, we can discuss them at our board meeting. Um, so you can, it's not upon us right away, but do you want to take back and look at those dates and see if switching the little bit sessions for town and Okay. Week different. And I'll take it back to the board and our administrative support to see if, because it was my thought, I'm not going to be involved in doing all of that, so I have to check. Okay, so there's no action that we can take at this this point. We're, we're, uh, we'll wait until till everybody checks in and, and decides. The next meeting we can decide whether or not to switch them. The only right. concern. Um, more than sure it has is we have some reports that are coming in in November, towards the end of November, that we need for part for our budget process because they're having some studies done. So I don't know if the fifth is going to work or not work at this point. If they're late, we're late. It's right. kind of that. In February? No. The, the, oh, okay. the December, I, I think we have a December 5th date. Is that right? Yes. Um, yeah. That's, that's the meeting. Um, the presentations. Right. It seems like we can also switch that around a little bit um, if we need to. How, how big is the presentation for water sewer typically? Is it a longer? It's not usually big, but <laughs> no. But no. this it's year, I, I mean, our meetings have been taking four hours. They used to take 40 mm. minutes. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So, well, if you want to, so I, I don't know. I don't know when our budget's going to be. Um, I just basically took last year's schedule and carried it forward for this year. So, well, I think our presentation will be tiny. It's the work to get there. So sure. I just don't know if um, the engineering firm will have enough to us so that we can have our four-hour meetings to get to you by the fifth. That's the concern. I promise I'll keep our thing. I don't have to. The 5th is the cemetery. The 5th of November? Or Maybe it's the 12th. Uh, the 5th of December. December. He's talking about a different one. He's not talking yeah. about deliberative now. He's yeah. talking about December. I'm talking about the initial one. presentation. Initial. Yeah. 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 They were talking about this one. Yeah. yeah. So it seems like it could switch and, and even be in the uh, department with the highway uh, in town if we needed to. One time. I don't know. It could. I mean, that is a. The, the town is a big one because it's the CIP highway transfer station, the whole, the whole shebang. So it, it generally um, generates a bit of conversation. Yeah, I'm sure the school one isn't, though. <laughs> so that's the option. Uh, yeah, well, it would be easier to have it than with the town. Okay. It would just be a long night. Yes. So we need to Could the town be ready by the set? No. We're barely able to meet that. So. Yeah. All right. Um, well, let's see how it goes, Frank. Why don't you keep us informed? And if we need to push it off as you get down to the wire, uh, we'll figure it out. Looks like it.
you know, when we had our meeting, we felt we were getting our engineering report through September, October, and now they're telling us towards the end of November. So that's why I'm concerned about that. Yeah. Okay. Maybe in October you'll have a better update for us. I hope so. So the option is probably to push it into the uh, oh, Any other questions or comments on the proposed schedule? Okay, I guess well, the next item is the um, town quarterly report. And Suzanne, I'd ask that you give me a nice summary. You know, talking about where things are, and I read that. It all made sense to me. Um, maybe you want to give a small presentation on yes, that. Yes, I, I can just kind of uh, encapsulate, you know, just kind of review all of that. So, uh, as we had suggested in the quarter one report, we had put us all on notice that we were concerned about our utility expenditures, but not ready to make any budget revisions. So, those concerns have continued, and in fact, we have revised our electric lines uh, upward. <coughs> with the town hall being the most dramatic, going from like a budget of 10500 to 18000 So that's, that was a pretty steep increase. Uh, and you'll see that throughout most of the electrical lines in the government building section, as well as the street lighting, which is in a section of all, uh, all its own. Do we know what's caused that? I know <coughs> the rates went up 20%. Right? Rates, I mean, that, yeah. That was just now. I, I doubt that there's like overall increase in usage in all of our buildings. So I just, yeah. you know, it's the rates. I mean, the winter was, they were yeah. tough pieces to the winter. It's any heating and cooling, any heat, uh, any cooling that took place in June. I don't remember that we had a particularly difficult time, but so that's. <coughs> Can we shop those rates? No. Why not? Resources. Fine. You could suggest that to the board. You know, I think overall, it's not so much even the shopping, but it's how do we how do we uh, consider reducing our overall usage by doing LED street for the street lights. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do. I, I came here once and talked about a performance an energy performance contract. It, it just, it was, we were studying this at the same time that we ended up doing the financing, and it just, was just too much. So those, you know, we formed a, a committee, an energy committee, it sort of really needed a, a heavy board presence in order to continue, and that just wasn't available. So, you know, it's just hard to be in all these places, but energy is something where I think, you know, the town has the ability to look for opportunities to save money. What, what's the total energy cost, electric, electric? Across all of our buildings? All of them. You'd have to, we'd have to go look at the report. Because the reason I brought that up is just last week, we chose to go look for the alternative, you know, like the NH or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And for us, it's going to make about a 25 dollar difference. Exactly. So if you take your bill, cut it in half, and then take that half, save at least 25, 20 to 25 percent off that half of the bill. Mm. How long have you been on it? We haven't been at them in the home for several years. And, and there has hasn't been any... As long as you set up the guidelines so that you're notified, there are no people, there are no clips, because they have to, they now have to notify you. Each year it re, re, may renew at a different rate, but you can negotiate. If you can lock it in for a year. You can lock it in for one, two, or three years, yeah. depending on the, on the, on the, on the, on the people, but... The way you can get in trouble is if you don't set up so they give you a reminder because mm -hmm. you can lose a good amount of what you save in just one month. Yeah, and so that's what the, they do is they just they they jack it up for that one month yeah. until you figure it out. So, yeah, you need the resources to... There's a few, few providers that... Uh, <coughs> North American, EMH. North American Power, EMH, there's no one too. Direct. So those are those are helpful ideas. That could help. Yeah, I can take them back to the board.
but above and beyond that, it would be helpful to find ways to reduce overall usage. Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of opportunities to do that, I'm sure. I think, you know, shopping it is a quick fix, but a longer term fix is. Yeah, is that. Yeah, yeah. Very quick question. The thermostat, is that accurate? I don't know. Because whenever it's at 76 in here, you need a jacket. Yeah, I guess it's not. <laughs> right? <laughs> Empirically, I guess the answer is, yeah. I guess it's not. Any, uh, do you want me to just... Yeah, please keep going. Um, all right, so electrical usage. Um, or the cost of electricity. Electrical usage. Uh, the other thing are, are changes in the transfer station. So, you know, putting out some PR associated with the fact that, you know, the commodities market, recycling commodities market is just tanky because of... China putting its foot down on what it's willing to accept, and et cetera, et cetera. So our single stream recycling is fast becoming uh, a burden to us and a cost. And so we are looking for ways and opportunities to manage that. And um, we are we are starting to pull out. We're going to we're, we're going to revert back to commodity recycling, individual commodity recycling. It's just going to take some time. So the board has, uh, we've already pulled glass out and are not aware of it. We finally have done some PR to the broader community about that. So we're going to be asking people to pull their, separate their glass out, and we're going to be hauling that. We're going to do the hauling ourselves to um, a place in Wakefield, which is near where one of our highway department staff lives. So he will take one of our trucks and haul it and keep the truck overnight and bring it back the next day. So that that will save us some uh, hauling costs. Not entirely, because we're still wearing to our gas in the um, We have also, the board also authorized us this past Monday, we've been looking at the situation, the purchase of a baler uh, in order to bail our recyclables, because the, you know, the, the more condensed you can pack that truck, the better off you are, the fewer hauls. So the baler, we currently, we, we couldn't afford it out of this year's budget entirely. So we entered into a, an agreement with Atlantic Recyclables and we will be renting it for the remainder, from a, roughly September through the end of this year and then the first three months of next year. And then likely by a, a Warren article asked the town to consider purchasing, the, you know, coming up with the money to buy the rest of the baler. And the arrangement that we have with recycling is that this monthly rental will come directly off the initial purchase price. So there's no, we're not paying any interest on this rental. It'll come off the purchase price. If the town says no, so we're not, we're not burdening a, a select board of the future. If the town says no, Atlantic Recycle will just take it back and that's the end of our baler. So, um, that's where that stands. The, we, again, we've authorized this. It, uh, Atlantic, it's refurbished. It's not brand new. We will be able to use a uh, skid steer in order to load it, which is good. But it makes it a little more expensive because it's a slightly bigger uh, thing. So the, the total project is about $23,000, I think. The baler itself is just under eighteen, I believe. But we have to, have, uh, we have to bring electrical power in. We have to have a concrete pad and those kinds of things. The, the uh, associated costs, like the pad and the electricity, we are paying for out of this year's budget. So the only piece that what, what, we're, we're, post, what we're pushing into FY19 is the rental of the first three months and then the purchase of the balance if the town approves in April. So uh, that's where that part of the recycling things stands. The other uh, piece of information on the transfer station is that, you know, we have been part, we're part of the Lancaster Regional Solid Waste Cooperative. And that, within that, we have a 10-year contract to bring our municipal solid waste to turn to Rochester. There was also a, a uh, smaller cooperative that owned a truck and we were part of, was it five people, I think, 35? Yeah, I think five in that little trucking cooperative. And so the trucking cooperative uh, allowed us to use that truck with the driver. We were, we were paying the cost for the driver and, and the truck to haul, to haul our 
municipal salt waste to the turnkey. And the, the truck from the beginning was a bit of a lemon, so it was costly, and we have been sort of chafing under the bit about that for the last couple of years. And we eventually got to the point, and we were not the only town that was not entirely happy, we got to the point where the remainder of what was due on the truck was likely going to be covered by a sale price. And as it turned out, the driver, almost <coughs> at the same time as we were doing this, uh, got ill and passed away. So we had no more driver either. And so the trucking cooperative disbanded. Uh, we put this truck out, we, the Lambert, this little cooperative under the aegis of the larger Lambert Reed, uh, Retail Co-op, put the truck out to bid. We recouped almost the entire sale price, the uh, almost what was left, the remainder of what was due on the truck. And it was maybe about 1,000, 1,300 that, that was still due. And the larger cooperative decided to uh, just subsume that and not charge the individual pounds. It was just easier for them to vote and say, we'll just assume this deficit. So, so we are no longer using a, a truck that we have not control of, but we have used up by this cooperative. So we had to we had to get by that hauler. So uh, the the co company that was hauling our recyclables, this was just a very fast moving fast moving pieces all over the place. He they were getting upset again with the recyclables market. Agreed to do our hauling, but I think we're trying to recover some of the money that they were losing with us recycling by jacking up the price of hauling to to turnkey. So as it turns out, we we now are using Troiano to haul, to do all of our hauling. They haul municipal solid waste and demo to turnkey. They will haul their, our recyclables to wherever we need them hauled. Right now, they're going to be going to Eco Maine in South Portland. And that's a short-term duration because clearly we want to move towards individual commodity recycling, and then we'll have to have a plan for each of these things, one of which, which would like be taking some of the uh, tin cans or whatever to, to Berwick iron and you know so so there'll be various things and we'll just have to stay tuned. So so that's been going on. We we are doing all of our own hauling ourselves directly. Um, that you see that as being sort of a temporary thing until the single street recycling gets set and then a, a new regime of hauling or do we have a different cost item that we have to think about for hauling next year? Question. So I, I think what I meant is that the hauling is no longer part of the contractual obligation with other towns. So it's entirely under our control. So we will be able to go out for bid any time we think we can get a better price somewhere and we're out, you know, we're in the a time phase when we, we're not under a contractual obligation. So that, that's to our advantage, you know, to sort of check in with the marketplace from time to time. So right now it's Troiano and they will be doing all of our hauling for the near term, anyway. Um, Except for the stuff going through? No, uh, well, turnkey, no, they're, take, they're taking that. They're taking the turnkey. They're taking our municipal solid waste to turnkey. They're taking their demolition to turnkey. Whereas before, the truck that was part of the cooperative that we were in was taking it. And that cooperative is now disbanded. It's a smaller, smaller cooperative. But they're not taking the glass. They're not taking the glass. The glass was never, it's not going to turnkey. The glass has been part of single screen. Okay. So the glass we are doing ourselves because we have an employee who lives right there, and so we're going to do it. And so, the, so the individualized stuff will be done in house? Uh, no, not necessarily. The glass just has, again, we're going to be looking at each thing and, and, oh. and determining. Right now, Troiano will be doing all of the hauling except this, this glass thing, which we are going to do out of, with our truck. But, um, you know, unless there's another arrangement, unless Berwick Iron can wants to pick up, I mean, I, you know, we're looking at, you know, lots of different pieces to, to each of, for each of these things. Joan? Sorry. Um, since we're not in the cooperative, is waste management honoring the 10-year contract? They had nothing to do with the, the trucking cooperative. Right, but there was the dumping was like, There's been no change to that 10-year contract. Wonderful. Nothing touched that. But this was just a separate, uh, a separate oh, little cooperative. Okay. Nothing yeah. to do with turnkey. Turnkey doesn't care how we deliver the stuff to them. We just, as, as long as we're different, as long as we deliver only municipal solid waste and demo. Good. No plastic. 
So, uh, a question about the bailer situation. Um, is the expectation that we already have the human resources, both time and skill wise, to manage the bailer when we get it next year, or will that be an additional? Well, it's a good question. So, what I'm leading to is that we have hired, uh, well, Ed Walsh is a full time employee at the highway department. He's hired by the HMP. So he is, we appointed him to take over the management of the transfer station in a more active capacity than we otherwise been able to do. And they are going to uh, manage the transfer station staff and use them in ways that are perhaps more efficient and effective than they have been used. And they will either, either I, I don't know who's going to be running the equipment, but yes, we, we feel that the, the highway department staff is sufficiently trained themselves to, to manage this. And so they either train uh, attendants or they'll, they'll just take care of that part of loading, doing, you know, loading the bailer and doing the bailer. Does that, does that help? And, and if we didn't go with the bailer next year, oh, then yes. we're kind of, the, the alternative is going to be more money than the bailer, right? The bailer eventually saves, eventually, yeah. saves this money. You know, we, no, we, we, can't, we didn't really have time to, to run a real projection model like that or return an investment, but you can just kind of empirically figure out that, you know, we're trying to stay ahead of this cost curve that, that, that's going in the wrong direction. And so what we're trying to do is reduce our need for hauling and our, to, to try to help cut our costs. And we're looking, you know, we've done some other interesting things. Um, we've been working with Northeast Recovery, Northeast Recovery and Recycling Association, the members, the folks who gave us the plan, RRA and RRA, yes. And so they've already made some solid recommendations that Ed has put in place. And one is, you know, I guess we had these propane tank, tanks sitting there forever and hadn't gotten rid of them as we could. So all you have to do is take the valves off and empty out the stuff and I don't know, do some magic and then you can dispose of them. So we're doing that. We're taking the cords off of uh, appliances so that we can then, you know, just bring them to the metal pile and stuff. So, so we're, you know, we're doing what appear to be little things. And again, these are, you know, we need to train transfer stations attendants so that they're willing and able to understand why they're going to be doing this now. But, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there is to our benefit in order to try to keep try to keep costs down because they just didn't So I want to question how that these various changes with the Chinese screwing yes. up the market and so forth and so on. What is is recycling still reducing the overall cost of disposing of waste or if I just threw most of it, well you tell me I can't put plastic in in the garbage anyhow because it turns you would take it. But what's happening to the economics of uh, recycling, screen. the disposal portion of recycling? Well, clearly single screen recycling is becoming less uh, uh, less viable economically. If you're talking about, which I think you are, what if we just what if we just put all of our called it all municipal solid waste? Yeah, just shut down all this stuff and lay it off to exactly. people and labor and so, so forth. What would happen to so the NR, So NRRA is telling us that it's still to our advantage to do what we are doing. Now, is it going to always remain that way? I don't know. But but the truth, then is that this gets us somewhere where, you know, we're trying to, you know, not see our costs skyrocket and not create an issue in the town for people who feel strongly about recycling. It, it helps maintain the status quo on, on recycling. And there are people who feel strongly that that recycling it, it, it's not it's not just an economic argument is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So environmental so too. Yeah. Once once you stop recycling and people stop being able to do it, getting them back trained yeah, and so doing it again is a huge yeah. absolutely. And and who knows how long this is going to be? Uh, yeah. you know, the, the market got upset from China, so. But everybody's in the same boat. I mean, it's yeah. It's it's, yeah. I mean, I was happy to start hearing it you know, on, on radio and on, on, you know, the news in various places because it it helps when you start bringing it up with the town. They can say, oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard that. So. Trump.
Okay, I got two questions on the bill. What's, what's the life expectancy, and what's the guarantee on it? How long is it? Well, we have a, we'll use. have a maintenance contract on it, so yeah. it'll be maintained by Atlantic Recycling. They've been good to us. You know, they're local. They're right around the corner. They want us to succeed. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what warranty is on it. Usually, on a refurbished, it's it's not it's not a lot. So I'm just trying to figure out what the yeah. life expectancy. It seems to me that when that's put forward as a warrant article, that those types of questions yeah. would be laid out. Like this is the. This is the forecast of what it's going to save. Yeah. Here's, here's what the co costs are going to be. Here's what the life expectancy. But that seems like a question that's really for. Yes, and this is you know we've had to we've had to kind of scramble to get us to this place. So, but we hopefully the board will have time to do those very things because they're helpful. They're helpful in trying to get the town to come to a decision about some cost like this. Will that, be, will that be placed on the CIP's project? Because that's over ten thousand. No, 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 because okay. I mean it's going to happen right. It's, it's happening now. So the replacement, yes, you know, once we've determined when we might need to think about replacing it, we'll go into CIP. Is it going to be a warrant article? Is that it's likely going to be a warrant article? That's the other. Thing. It's set apart of the CIP. It'll be a separate warrant article. Did you have a second question, Charlie? No, that was both the one okay. I guarantee in life oh. expectancy. Although I suppose, you know, having now that you raise that question, it, it's going to be the board's decision. I mean, they could put it on the CIP for 2019, and then it would be enveloped in whatever the sum total is. The CIP recommended it to the select board to put it on the budget. Yeah, I don't know that this uh, was it even part of the discussion because it's all it all was happened contemporaneously. For CIP, not that no, I recall. No. Yeah, it was ha you know it was like it's kind of like it happened just. Um, I'm just looking at my notes on the transfer station to make sure that I uh, get everything sorted out. I think I do. What I'd suggest, Corey, is that you attach the notes that um, Suzanne has included with, uh, with the budget as part of the minutes. Because you want me to put that like at the end, like a big yeah. long footnote? Just well, I would just attach it as an end. Okay. How would that? How would that look? So yeah, so so Sally does something like that for the town. So like if uh, if we get an email that's particularly uh, of import, I mean she will just sometimes if it's an email like that she'll put it like in the middle of the minutes. Okay. But other times she'll there'll be something larger. She'll either say C notes at the end. Okay. So they just you know, okay. yeah, the meetings adjourn as a solid black line or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Feel free to run something by me. Okay. Yeah. Basically, I'm just trying to figure out the format, like, and know it. Or, like, do you... Oh, sorry. So, I have a question for Susan before we move on to the next subject. Um, so, if the town hall electricity is only expended at 32%, why, uh, what was the cause for increasing it by $1,000? If you take whatever we expended through June of 2017, and look at that percentage of what we finally expended for the year, mm -hmm. and you take that percentage and, and transact it against the figure of June, that's what you, what you get. Oh, that's the figure we get. Okay. So, you know, what percentage is whatever we have expended in 2017 in June, what percentage of that, what percentage was that figure of the total, mm -hmm. and I'll take that percentage and divide it into what you've already spent, and then how you can put, I mean, it's, it's a way to project, it, is it, it was just illustrative when I did it because I went, oh my goodness gracious. Now, will we hit that? I don't know, but I don't want to be. I don't want to be on the other end. Okay. So, you, but la last year historically, most of your expenditure came in the latter half of the year. For the town hall, it suggests that. Yes. Um, no, it, it doesn't really. I don't think it's. It's saying that it, at this point. Whatever we've expended represents whatever I said in the note of the, of the total budget in 2017. So then I took that percentage and divided it into what we had spent this year through that time. And that's what comes out. So whatever the percentage. I see my note. Yeah. Sorry. All right. 
So, so the quarter two expenses at FY17 were 32.5% of where we ended up at the end of the year. So it was about a third, let's say. Yep. And so if you take that percentage mm -hmm. and divide it back into what we had spent this year, so uh, we're this at, year through we're quarter at the, two. We're at the same point this year, 32.5%. Because of the amended final amount? Yeah, that's because it's now because working against 18,000. Yeah. It's not yeah. working against this. She's not doing these against so the original 10,000. This is against the, the, the so revised So we're, we're really about 50% expended at this point. Had of the original. It? Yes. Okay. Is that, so you that expect help? it to be, okay. Yeah, that's okay. What that, it's one way to project. Yeah, because yeah, first quarter was 3,006. Um, so oh. if we're 50% expended, um, $8,000 seems like a lot of money, and so that, I just want to make that point. And where did that come from? So the budget revisions, I think they're in the bottom of this, my notes. The budget revisions are somewhere. They came from contingency. We emptied out the line for termination and insurance adjustments. We took some money from community assistance, and we took some money from professional services. Those were the that was the those are the big places. There were drips and drafts and other places, but those are the big ones. One, one other question before we leave the bridge. What what is it? Uh, Trump and other people keep telling us how the economy is building and consumers are spending more money and so forth. Do we see any difference in the per capita waste disposal as, 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 as the years moving along? Yes. Is there any just increase in tonnage or is it just because of the changes I in the I don't know cost. that we've actually seen the increase in tonnage, but that's a good thing to try to pay attention to, and I'll pass that along to Ed. I think what our highway department staff have noted is that we generate a lot of garbage. <laughs> not necessarily, not, I, I don't know that that's an increase in the past, or just a, a comment on the overall <clears throat> tonnage based on, for example, Acton, Maine, or something. That, I, I don't know. I mean, that that's clearly a, a, would be a great figure to have. Um, let's see. I'm sorry. I have to. I've lost my place. Oh, maintenance. Okay. So maintenance of town hall. We've had. A, we've had. We've consistently under budgeted town hall maintenance for like this is like a third year. I mean, like really under budget. Things keep happening. And so what has happened recently is that we have a large backup generator. It's large because it, it, it's the backup for the emergency operations uh, in the police department. So we have a large backup generator that apparently has not been maintained in any kind of regular fashion. And so when somebody looked at it, they suggested we really need to do a complete overhaul in order to prevent or having to buy a new one. So that cost about $2,000 to do that complete maintenance, whereas replacing the generator is like a $60,000 issue or item. Um, the uh, HVAC system has five uh, compressors to manage the cooling of the system. They have not been looked at since we installed them and the building was redone. And that's now going on to 20 years, and so one of them just stopped working. So we have to replace one of these five compressors, uh, and that replacement, along with a service contract we decided to put in place for the others, will cost us around $11,000. So we've asked uh, Denise to make sure that this backup generator and the replacement of the other compressors are on the CIP because certainly they will need replacement at some point. Uh, for this year, the money to cover these two HVAC items is, is being covered by the police department. We are extremely appreciative of Chief Ducharme for uh, finding money in his budget to, to do that. We'll see those revisions in quarter three. We don't know exactly what the final cost will be, so we haven't actually done the, the, the budget revisions. Um, and what we're so, once we determined that, that, that our police chief was going to cover these two surprise items, we're, we're then going to look at whether there are sufficient funds in the maintenance line 
to, to repair the portico and repaint the portico out there, which we were hoping to do this year. So we don't know, but we're, the board will be evaluating that. Well, I just want to comment on that. The cost of getting so high, and it, it seems to me, you know, when we were in the discussion last night, whether you keep this building and maintain it or so forth, these kinds of costs that you're pointing out are just starting to skyrocket and they'll probably even go up more as other things begin to pop up. Well, so we're trying to catch uh, up to the CIA. We need to really be able to tell the public what it will cost to operate this building, even if we decide to move everything out of here and then and, and there's a group that's going to beat the drums to keep this building. But it's going to cost a fortune to maintain this building as a historic building. Uh, with the way it's set up to be heated and so forth. And we need to be getting those kinds of figures to tell the public about what it really costs and what we're projecting the costs are going to be over the next 10 years for this building to maintain and, and compare it with what... Yes. So that's what the right. CIP does for us, right? So, but the problem has been that we don't have a building maintenance. We don't have a direct, you know, we don't have anybody who looks at the facility. And so... You know, they were never part of the CIP. So as we've discovered them, oh, roofs, okay. So now the roofs are part of the CIP. Uh, the, the furnace is part of the CIP. The, now the compressors are part of the CIP. Now the backup gener the generator will be part of the CIP. And that will give us an, a picture of what those costs are, and I'm sure there are others, that, will, that we will have to pay attention to in this building, as well as the, the operational costs, which are... So not, uh, no, the only point I was making in the short run, uh, somebody's got to, yeah, going to do this. I don't wait. You say, well, eventually we'll get a CI process that'll spit this stuff out. But we're going to be asking people to think about making some serious decisions about other things, about the police station and so forth. And we really need to get a lot of other support data because people. You know, there's people on both sides that are well-meaning, but... Yeah, someone has to get supporting data. I understand. Absolutely. So there was some discussion when they hired, um, the school hired the building maintenance person that it would be potentially shared. Whatever happened with that? Well, it's not our employees, so the school's employees. I know, but that was one of the selling points of, of having a facilities manager that it could be shared. Stay tuned. We'll be discussing it uh, next Thursday. Stay tuned. All right. Are you done with the items no. like that, or you got no, the next item? No, I have not. <laughs> I, I think I'm barely halfway through. Okay. Uh, road maintenance. So we. I'm sorry. No, no. So we uh, hired Pike to do to work on both uh, the Woodlands and Heritage Field at Roberts Farm, which is Heritage Drive, as it's called. And um, you know, we found surprises in both places. That it was a substandard road bed places. And so while it had, was not our plan to do a full reclamation of the woodlands, <coughs> we ended up needing to do a full reclamation of the woodlands because of the substandard base. So we had to add a bunch of gravel. So what we so for the three hundred thousand dollars, what we ended up doing is reclaiming all of the woodlands and putting a binder coat. What we did in uh, on Heritage was take out the roller coaster, for those of you who travel Heritage. The roller coaster is, I guess, it should be gone. And, it's gone. And, you know, we had to we put... Yeah, sorry about that, yeah. Uh, were you selling tickets? To, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we made a box cut and took out all the garbage. It had been some kind of landfill or something. And uh, you know, put some fill, put some uh, fabric and, uh, you know, put a binder coat in that part and we planned another small section of it. So that's what we did with the 300000 There's still about 25000 left. And so <clears throat> George has been coming to us and he has a little list of small projects. They include, you know, like some sidewalk repair in Stockdale, um, working in the fire station. This is on a CIP and this, so this should be a help of the CIP and that will take some project dollars away. George is going to, and the highway department is going to be able to, to, to dig out the bays that have sunken because of the weight of the vehicles and, uh, you know, get material to, to, to bring it up and then re-asphalt it. So they're hoping to be able to do that <clears throat> this summer. 
and another, a lot of other small projects. So that will pretty much exhaust the full 325,000. So a question, Tom. Because they did the full reclamation and you put a binder code, I'm assuming that they they didn't do as, it's not as final a job, or maybe you alluded to it in your notes, they're going to have to do more work there than anticipated later, or is that? Yeah, so originally we conceived of the Woodlands and Roberts Farm as two years projects. We weren't sure whether we'd work a little bit on both or all of one, one year, all of one, you know, but it was going to span two years. And so this was the first year, and yes, it's going to span another year. So what we're not sure about is whether we're going to be able to complete them next year. Because, you know, the five, you know, the cost of asphalt is not coming down. So there's top coating of the woodlands, and then in Roberts Farm we have to reclaim the parts that have not been reclaimed and then uh, put a binder coat in the top coat. So the, the, essentially there is going to be a higher than anticipated cost to finish those jobs that you, because, because to, the conditions to are different. Yes, to finish them. That doesn't mean, mean that we'll see it all in next year's budget. So we're going to try to manage this. We had a boost of an extra twenty, an extra fifty thousand dollars this year from the state. This year being twenty eighteen, that's not going to be there next year. So you know we need to figure out what makes sense based on you know with the rest of the budget. And those aren't the only roadway projects that are coming. Yes. <laughs> so and we're you know looking to update the ten year road plan. So that's that's in process too. I'm not there, there've been a couple of blips associated with that, but uh, you'll hear more about that as as we figure that out. But but certainly, in the near term, it's completing both of those developments. The other thing we have to consider, uh, next on the list, I think, was the village. And I think what's going to happen is that's going to be supplanted by Oak Street. Uh, we've been in touch with John Storr, who's the new uh, head of the, I guess it's Community Services for Dover. And, you know, half a, half a part of Oak Street is ours. And so we need to come up. We already have a memorandum of understanding with regard to winter maintenance, potholes, who gets notified, and the like. But we need to expand that MOA so that it so that it covers things like the a reclamation or, or repaving or whatever of that road. And what is going to be our percentage of that? So that we need to bang that out in a in a memorandum memorandum of understanding. And I think there Dover is itching to get that make that happen sooner rather than later. So 2020 may need to be Oak Street or somewhere around there. So let me just say one more thing, if, um, unless it's totally gone, which is also possible it's gone. So go ahead. Have we set the border on Oak Street? Yes, we did. Yes. So we, we did complete that project. We know what our line is. Michael Rolo has perambulated the line, uh, you know, was surveyed by McEnany, it went before the Dover Council, it came to us, everybody said yes. Uh, it's, it's halfway for much of it, and then it tapers off to around Fresh Creek across that side of Portland Avenue, you know, the old. So, this is, is it right down the middle of the road for most mm -hmm. of it? Much of it, okay. yeah, you know. Okay, well, Yeah, more of a, there's some odd changes, but this memorializes it. And once it falls. Wasn't the other projects that um, Road Agent Gilnet will be working on with road funds? We're going to publish them, but they're uh, so side, a couple of sidewalks on Stockdale, Locust in Maine. There's some issues. Uh, I think he mentioned Front Street. I, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not going to remember them, but we'll, we'll get that out there. <laughs> Uh, we had some interesting news on the culverts on Sligo Road. Uh, as you recall, those are our two big remaining culvert projects. These are ones that you know, would likely require engineering, would likely require some bigger bucks, and why we have the culvert funding and fund it. So the, 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 more, the northernmost of those two culverts, the one that's on a one-lane road, is um, you know, with some help from the Aikman family. Uh, George and Ed were, and, and some of the Aikmans themselves, Will Aikman in particular, were able to dig out and get the water to start flowing through the culvert in a better fashion so that it no longer flows over the road. We've had to close the road in some of these big storms. And it, we've had a few big storms in the last couple of weeks. And we did not need to 
close the road. It's flowed through the culvert. There is a plan for solidifying it that will uh, become a little bit clearer as, the, as we get closer to figure out what we want to do. But we're probably not going to do anything this year. We will uh, ask for more money for the culvert fund for next year. And so we'll have the 10000 in there. We'll ask for some more money. And the, the even, but it looks like that's not going to have to be a total replacement, which is what we were thinking we were going to have to do. So that's really good news. And the, the one that's closer to Pinch Hill, which is the one-lane road, has also been a concern to us because the work that was done to make it one-lane is, is not, it's not going to last forever. You know, it was known to not be, a, be about maybe a five to ten year solution to the issue. So George has been talking to our oil tanner engineer and is coming up with some ideas that, by the way, there, we, have, we are really lucky with our highway department. Yeah. They're, they're inventive, they're good problem solvers, they're pragmatic, they have a do-it-yourself attitude. They, they've been great. So they're working with, with, they're trying to figure out a way to reopen that as a two-lane road without costing us a complete you know, arm and leg. So, well, it's not going to be ready. The thought process isn't going to be ready for next year. What I think may happen is that in 2019, we would have a plan for the northern one, and it would probably be you know, around ten dollars to $12,000 a month more. It may not even be that much. It kind of depends on what they discover. That's the culprits. Um, also, we did give a $1 an hour increase to Ed Walsh because of the additional duties that we've asked him to take care of the transfer station. And for performance reasons, we also provided a $1,000 salary increase to our road agent. Um, let's see. And this states where the bulk of the revision dollars come from, which are the state of contingency, termination payments, community assistance, and professional services. I, I just want to, oh, I have some concerns about the fact that there's no money in contingency left. Um, it's zero. Do yep. you have any plans for any emergencies? That's it. I love that question. I told you on that. Yes. We don't have any plans for emergencies. They fall <laughs> upon us. Okay. We have zero plans. So <laughs> the emergencies fall upon us, but we've had to take them because we've had emergencies. That's what the contingency is there for. You know, the board will have to try to manage this. I think we got into it last year pretty early. You know, the winter last year, you know, a year ago, we got it. You know, these things happen. <laughs> you just don't know. Yeah, so. Um, so I don't mean to be flipped, but I mean, we don't know. We don't know what we don't know. Right? Um, yeah, no, I, I just think that, you know, we, we, took, we pulled $8,000 out of contingency not knowing that we have to spend it. That's all. We had to last year as well because of the winter expenses. So it was gone pretty much by, I think by this time last year. Well, thank God for contingency. That, that's, that's what I say. <laughs> uh, yeah. Unlike California, though, we don't plan on any major forest fires. No, that one we don't have to worry about. You, not to date anyway. Don't jinx us. Yeah. Um, so, summer wreck. Uh, we continue to be pleased with the programming for Summer Rec. It, it gets good reviews, uh, people are happy. Uh, we're, we're still working on processes that provide the best level of financial oversight and control. Uh, from a budgetary perspective, we have fewer enrollees in both camps, I think, than what the budget had been prepared with. And so, we're in, so we will get less revenue than what we had planned. We'll have fewer actual expenditures. But I think the early reckoning is that our expenditures will still outpace the revenue by two to four thousand dollars. We're not sure exactly what. So we'll have to that will have to be covered. Um, and Denise is going to be working with the rec committee on the 2019 budget. So I think that will help also keep the budget help to keep it as a more realistic kind of a, a budget. Um, that's it for expenditures. I can go on to estimated revenues. Um, we have a couple of things that we're concerned about. Again, uh, the recreation will not be recovering as much revenue as expected. Uh, so we're looking at that. A uh, police detail, we unexpectedly lost much of the detail work from the town of Lee. 
So we're also anticipating a shortfall in that revenue line, and it could be as much as twenty thousand. So, office is salary. That, no, that we we uh, our officers do detail work for. It's outside of their regular. Lease, lease, lease paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Le and we'll hire them if we have if we need some flagging on a like when we did Foundry Street and Bear Road, we actually hired a police detail from our town to do it. We didn't do it for our little developments. We did the flagging ourselves because they're not major roads. Yep. So, so you know, they budget what they think they're going to bring in, and we happily put that on the revenue side, and, and, and you know, things happen, and that was an unfortunate. Did they lose the contract? Or? Mm -hmm. I, something happened, and I would prefer, I mean, it's just, so it's, it wasn't for performance or any reason like that. It had to do with the town of Lee and not with us. And I saw them at Star. So I don't know if they're starting to do that now. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Two weeks ago, I saw the Chief Two Shop. Yeah, maybe that was always part of the. Yeah, I don't know if I he was doing know. the vote or not. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But I don't quite understand if they're not working any overtime or they're just not getting overpaid. Why is it costing the town? It's a loss of so revenue. It's not a cost. It's, it's a loss of revenue. This is the the margin you got over an administrative cost. Oh yes, but even the whole thing. So so we well, have detail. Yeah, yeah. We have detail work in, in its own line on the expense side, and we have the anticipated revenue in its own revenue line. And so we're going to have to cover the expenses, whether they're expenses there or not. We still have to raise and appropriate. I mean, it stays in fund balance if we haven't spent it. The real issue is the. The loss of the revenue that's over and above the expense. Well, I, 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 I don't think we should be using uh, overage on outside detail to balance our budget in the first place. It's, so if we lost it, it wouldn't make any problem. But well, that's dangerous. Assuming it will ever. I think I, I, yes, I will agree with you. I don't think we'll do that again. It, you know, it, it was. Okay, well, that's, yeah. that's yes. kind of a budgeting process. It, I, I don't think it was you a, want to depend on outside. Yes, a, a I wish you would. Surplus above, wish, which would give you flexibility to do something. Right. But if we didn't get it, it wouldn't create a crisis. Yes. How big is the number that we want? Right now, it looks like it could be as big as 20000 But it says 20000 and then whatever their salaries would be comes out of that? Or is that 20000 No, that's, that's, on that's on the revenue side. side. Yeah. It's on the yeah. revenue side. But then we, we wouldn't have to pay the officers because they wouldn't be working. They're not working, but no. we had budgeted that as well as the 10, 15 percent over that we, because when we bill for the detail work, we bill a standard right. fee. Right, there's an admin right. fee yeah. that you get. That yeah, so well, we budgeted it. So it seemed like a good idea. It seemed like a good idea at the time. And it's not a good idea. No. So that's the takeaway is that it's not a good idea. we prepare yeah. the budget for next year, we shouldn't be yeah. relying on, on that. That'll be, if we get it, it's an extra. Yeah, it just stays in fund balance, and that's Great. lovely. And Continues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can't mess it. Can't. The, revenue and the, the, the revenue and the expenses just don't, don't mix. All right. All right. Uh, other items. Uh, the board is reviewing the resident tax and the property inventory survey and may stop either or both of these processes. Uh, the result would be a reduced revenue from these individual tax lines, but they're tax lines, and so they would just be distributed as taxes in a different way. Why would you do that? Uh, I don't know. The board hasn't done it. They're considering it. Why? Uh, well, uh, the, where the there are only two towns in the state of New Hampshire that still do resident taxes. We're one of the two. There's a cost to us to do it, and uh, there's an administrative cost, and residents don't care for it. So I don't know. I mean, if you feel strongly about it, I would say, you know, we're sending an email to the board. Absolutely. And because all of the renters no longer have to pay that, and it falls all on the property tax owners. Yes. It's $13,000 that's distributed across the tax space. So I mean, it's not it's not a huge amount. It's about thirteen thousand. That's what we budgeted this year. So I mean, I would say if you feel strongly, please do contact the board. I think last year we got nineteen thousand. It was seventeen last year, I think, but it not it wasn't so the year before. So I don't know I don't know whether there was a posting, you know, some of last the year before. So we didn't feel comfortable in in making it be that amount. And renters don't pay it. 
So we got to up the residents. Is there a thing? They can hire for re uh, renters. They can't. Sorry. You know, and people over 65 don't pay. And they don't pay resident tax. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. This is probably a dumb question. Can you have a resident tax for just renters and not for property? No, this is state staff. The just state, the state manages it. They just allow us now and have for a number of years to say, if you don't want to collect it, you don't have to. And yeah. we are one of two towns. I know that. that I That's right. Yeah. Renters aren't the only ones that pay the rent. Property tax. Property tax owners. Do you know the percentage? Just residents. Just people who are under the size. Yeah. Do you know the breakdown of property owners versus renters? We need all the money we can get. <laughs> Well, we're going to have it. It's just a question of whether I whether you pay, you know, fifty cents or ten cents more in your property tax bill, or whether you're paying it as ten dollars, you know, at the window. That's that's the difference. So again, if you feel strongly, I suggest you check it out before. Uh, Jody, question? Yeah, we have done the cost analysis about that last year before we sent it out. It cost about six hundred dollars to send it out with the mailers and the paper and the um, administrative time. And in return, one year we got ten thousand, and then last year we got fifteen, I believe. So it, it's a, it's it's worth. In my eyes, it's worth doing still. That's an opinion. I, I was, and we did a cost analysis when I was with you. So. And I think that's an item for probably the board. Yes. This year. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is the board's decision to make. So, if you would like to have an influence or comment or whatever, I would just suggest to. Is there a way we can get that stat? Or how many renters are there out? How many property loans are out? How many renters? That would be. Yeah, I'm just curious what the ratio is. That would be a good one. Yeah. Again, I guess I would, I would yeah. say just because we're cricking yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's probably not a issue for today. Sure. I mean, that's a tricky question, but. You, you might, um, there are various state agencies that provide a lot of demographic data. You might check to see whether they have that sort of information available. Um, let's see, the board has also briefly discussed, you know, we had a brief conversation, and I hope the board continues to discuss this, the possibility of using revolving funds to enable better accounting and more isolation of certain fee-based systems like summer rent programs and police detail so that they don't muddy up the operating budget and the, uh, the work that estimated revenue. So we're not sure exactly how they work. And so, you know, there is some uh, conversation about looking at that. And that's all I have. What would be the, the reason to move to that? So it's fee-based. So, so you can, so it doesn't lapse at the end of the year. So if Summer Rec collects so much in fees, they use that fee money to pay out the costs and it you know if they don't have it they can't pay it it, it, it just helps potentially we don't know we're, we're not sure but it could help isolate these fee-based systems that um, are that, that are giving us a lot of financial oversight and, and administrative uh, cost at this at this end and maybe we might think it might be a better way to manage that through a revolving fund. So again, we're not sure we're looking at it. But how many hours of bookkeeper time and so forth is involved in that? You know, might have used to start monitoring each revolving fund in more detail. You know, that's, a, that's a question of what the cost is. We're, we're doing it now out of our own. So there's just a lot of financial oversight that we're having to do with REP because of how, you know, there's a lot of activity. There are a lot of people doing things. And so we're looking for a way to make that more streamlined. Is a revolving fund the appropriate way to do that? I, I don't think the board knows that yet. So clearly that we're trying to reduce two things. I mean, we're trying to reduce overall administrative support for time, but also look for better accountability, perhaps. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Emily. Hey, we got questions. Oh, sorry. 
I thought they were all ready to have questions. Yeah, I thought it was supposed to be. time for questions. Okay. Uh, Charlie. Oh, oh my name questions. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, what do you got? Well, I'll let everybody else have a chance on page one. Well, we'll go page by page, no? Well, you just pick items that you have. Okay. And just bring up an issue if you have it. Okay. I'd ask, I'd ask in, in general when you come to the meeting no that we just look at it ahead of time so we can go a little quicker <coughs> rather than page okay. by page. Okay, line 30. Time clock, time clock. Town clerk siphon. I'm confused by that. Okay, in March, I mean there's three elections, there's $200 each election. Each election. In March, it was $200. And now, it's three thirty-five. How come the change? I, I don't know. I mean, we can try to find out. I mean, obviously, we're not going to spend more than six hundred dollars. There were probably a lot of there are a lot of hours for town-related elections, and so maybe maybe she put in the request for stipend. I mean, if it's we're not going to overspend the line six hundred dollars. No, it just it just confused me. Michelle asked this course line, line 40. The reason I'm saying is because when the notes came to yeah. last time, I was having a hard time figuring out sort of which yeah. issue was which, so we have to the note, you know, which line item it is, and we record it. On line 40, it. Michelle isn't here, so I'll ask it. Uh, the voting booths, they were budgeted for 700, and they came in at 925. How come? They were more expensive than we anticipated. Well, see, what confused me on that is in March, it was a P.O. for $700. And then we never hear anything else until we get the budget at nine twenty. So the invoice came in at more than $700. It was it never brought up that it was over at a select board meeting. Well, the board had approved the idea of the voting. I mean, you know, if, if it's the process that, that's a concern. No, no. I thought there was a certain percentage over that you could that, go. I would say that, the, well... You know, until the auditor slaps us on the wrist, I mean, you know, we're, we manage this on our own. So, this is this is less than the threshold of some of the purchase orders that we're trying to concentrate on. So, it, it was it did it didn't rise to the level of a, of a problem for us. Okay. I won't ask anymore. So the so the range was came in at nine twenty five. Yes. On line 60, which has always been over the years, why it keeps going up, why, why did the uh, payroll services go up? And we got, we're writing more checks, or they raised the cost per check, or yeah. what's going so on? It, we, yeah, so we may, not, we may not have needed to raise it. We didn't raise it by very much, but the, we get a big spurt of, of activity and therefore of invoicing from paychecks at the beginning of the year because they give you W twos, and so it's a, it was a little. And then the contract is such that the pay an increase in price happens mid year, June. Excuse me. So so rather than run the risk, you know, when we were doing all of this revision budget revisions anyway, we decided to play it safe and to. Increasing, but yes, we do have more people. There are more people who work in summer rec, so that's that. In, that is increased the number of paychecks. We have, you know, an extra person at the highway department, an extra person at the transfer station. So that's uh, that's where that comes from. I have a question. Um, line sixty-five. Um, termination payments, insurance adjustments. So we. That's a new line item that was. Wasn't budgeted last year, but we budgeted five thousand this year. What was what were you anticipating now? So that was to cover. So if, if we have a full time employee that that terminates, mm -hmm. we have to pay uh, a big, accrued vacation, and we have no mechanism. We have no fund to do that, so it comes out of our operating budget. So we thought we should we'd be better off budgeting for that. And if all of us get if a single employee. Did, uh, gets married or changes coverage, that that practically doubles the, our insurance cost. And again, we have no line that takes care of that. So that was why we introduced the line. 
Uh, I've talked to the board. I don't know if they'll decide to do this, but I've talked to the board of perhaps setting up a, a reserve fund for this. You know, rather than trying to raise five thousand every year, and maybe we use it, maybe we don't, set up a reserve fund that that builds this little thing up to I don't know something ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars, and then it can just sit there and it only needs to be replenished if we have to use it. But that was the intent for that bond. So you're not planning for any terminations or any insurance adjustments for the rest well, of the year? If, well, I don't know. We don't know until it happens. Well, it's zero now, so hopefully not. It was non-existent in the past. So, so this was a way to at least think about it and think about a possible expense that we hadn't been thinking about it before. So I think it was a good idea. It remains a good idea, but we had to look for money somewhere to cover some of our some of the expenses that we were thinking about and the electrical use and that sort of stuff. Give it some time this time. Anybody else with the questions on the town budget? No <laughs> All right. So we'll report for the school. Yeah. Oh, well, I have one question for here. Uh, revenue from other governments, why is that? Uh, it seems to be uh, compared to last year, going up a lot this year. What happened there? So I have to close my document, but I can tell you. So the fire truck that we bought, uh, we we applied for a grant from New Hampshire DPS, which is a carry was a flow through from EPA for municipalities, or I think anybody, but not maybe not just municipalities, municipalities uh, places that were uh, replacing you know their old diesel vehicles sooner than they might have otherwise. 
And so because it had been originally on the plan for a year later, you know, we were able to say, look, this is earlier, and we applied for the grant, and it was like $109,000. And so we didn't receive it last year. We bought the truck. We received it this year. There's also some FEMA money and Homeland Security money. Chief Duchamp has gotten some grants to cover uh, some uh, upgrades to radio equipment and security sorts of things. So that's also in there. But the big one, the big jump, is the 109, 10,000 from uh, DES through the EPA. Not to be seen again. Not, we're going to be anticipating that next year. Okay, time to keep the school on. Um, can I just ask one question? Am I reading this correctly that we're only at 18% of anticipated revenue?
So until everything's resolved, it, the number of 214 is still stuff to be encumbered? Yes. In one month? Okay. Can you talk about the overages um, for 2311 School Board um, and the custodial services? Yes. Um, school Board... Um, the school board is because, um, first of all, we had an overdue on advertising, um, uh, requests for proposals, and uh, fulfilling the positions that we have taken this year, um, principal search, etc. Um, and then we were also doing a mailing that began monthly, and then we re realized the cost that that was <laughs> incurring and stopped it very quickly. Um, so that, um, that accounts for the school board line being over, and then for custodial services, that was um, substitutes to cover uh, days when the custodian needed to be out. How many days is that? Six, almost $6,000? I don't know the answer to that, I'm sorry. I asked last month about total package for the principal. Mm -hmm. When can I have that? Uh, his, I don't have the total package, but his salary is ninety-three thousand. Okay. Um, and then if you need the rest of the numbers minus the health. You can give the rest in October. Okay, great. Um, ninety-three. Thank it's you. a good uh, segue to next year. Um, our new principal, Rich Hartford, has begun. Um, is working hard and doing great things already. Um, along with Bob Domsky, who's the new SA, uh, new superintendent, excuse me. Um, they were both part of our um, board retreat uh, what, last week, two weeks ago, um, and seem to be doing great work already, so uh, we're very happy with that. Uh, we have had a number of resignations this year that we did not expect, um, both professionals and paraprofessionals, so we're going to have some new hires next year that um, we have not accounted for budgeting wise, so we could have um, some question marks as far as that goes. Have you, like, kind of, um, you know, that as you were previously kind of losing staff, you were leaning more towards the co-teaching model. Where is that now? Yeah, we um, we have actually discussed um, making sure that we're right sizing the staff as we have done in the past and seeing exactly what we need. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're hiring accordingly to what we believe that we need, but we've definitely been having those discussions to make sure. Have you taken any more steps towards co-teaching, though? Toward the co-teaching? I mean, well, that's more of an inner building thing. Mm -hmm. What I know about it is really only anecdotally, um, but I do know that there's still co-teaching happening with this school. Um, I'm not sure. I, it'll, I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens this coming year under our new principal, um, who has a, a, a different way of doing things. Um, so it'll, it'll be an interesting transition to see how things move forward with the new uh, superintendent and new principal. Um, yeah. Can you, um, so can we get some details around the custodial services coverage for the next meeting, and also? Um, um, Judy had said that there were some changes coming down the line. Can you speak to that? Changes in custodial services? Um, well, the facilities manager, you said something? No, there? I just said stay tuned. There will be things that will be discussed. Um, oh, not at I this think meeting? That, no, at the school board meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think okay. that was just, um, you know, our, the school board will continue this year to focus on making sure we're pooling resources with the town, I think, though. Oh, okay. That was okay. That, what that was referring to. Okay. Um, that's okay. definitely for yep. the school board meeting. All right, so yeah, if we could just have some details around um, the over from the custodial service, maybe a little more um, granular information. Okay. Um, no, I don't think we have anything else. Capital school improvement projects for the next five years. Um, we have uh, a plan for the secure and accessible entry reconfiguration. If anyone has been up those stairs, the front main entrance of the school is not very accessible. Um, so we are um, doing an engineering study for that, so we'll see what comes of it. Um, and what else? Um, 
insulation projects, heating projects, ceiling tiles and plumbing throughout the school. Um, those two things are kind of being handled piecemeal each year, but um, there are definitely some things coming down the pipe that we're thinking about, and that's why we established the Capital Building as well. So I think we'll Can you talk about any anticipated enrollment changes for the next one? Mm -hmm. I don't um, know of any. I know that our kindergarten this past year was um, harsh. I know that it will be again this coming year. And I have heard tale that the largest growing population in our town right now is between the ages of two and five. <laughs> um, so as much as you can anticipate what that means for RGS is about as much as we can anticipate. What about um, enrollment changes for the Marshall School System? Are you anticipating any new students um, this coming year? I don't. Have you heard anything about that? I haven't heard anything. I think there's one or two uh, uh, because I, I know residency requirements have been discussed and we're going to formalize those. But uh, yeah. How would you get your information on two to five year olds? I, I got it from my board chair. I'm not sure where she got it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, they, they, there are projections out you know, about towns and how fast they're growing and where they're going from. And, uh, and, and Is that a projection on average or just the town? Just, just the, the town. town. Just yeah. the town. If you, if you maybe Google the demographic state of New Hampshire, I mean, there's, I, I don't know what's the, I think it's the Department of Labor, the Department of probably Economic mm -hmm. Development, that mm -hmm. has a whole, uh, maybe Department of Labor, mm -hmm. a whole lot of demographics that are particular to individual towns. Mm -hmm. They say the average assess value, the age demographics, you know, so that's, it is kind of interesting to look at that. You could give it off the town inventory. Mm -hmm. No, you have to compile that. But it's not, it's not right there on our website. It, these things come in with pieces of paper. How many were enrolled for this period and how many were enrolled for the next year? Um, I don't have the enrollment for next year, but I know we're around 55 or 56 closing out the year this year. So last year, um, we budgeted, I think, $30,000 um, in the event um, there were unexpected students that were added. Did that get used? Um, you may remember that we have now created a, um, a reserve fund, which ha which was not funded. So we intend to fund it. Uh, we, we, the intention is that next year there will be a warrant article for, for if there's money available at the end of uh, of this budget year that will fund that. And it will, it will not be in the budget next year. It will not be in our next year's budget. That's the intention. So it was in this last year's budget? Yes, indeed it was. And did it get used? Yeah. No, it did not. It didn't get used? Not yet. Not that we know. Not yet. Right. So we, we haven't received all of our bills right. from our food yet. So. Is 
percent of the year. That's, that's kind of a good thing. Any concerns for the rest of the year? Again, not having the crystal ball, but anything you're anticipating? Not, not for the rest of this year. Um, you never know how you're going to test when you can do it in proper tests. We had our last test we passed, which was good. Um, when you don't, you have mailings and an, an extra you know, cost associated. Um, lab equipment and, and lab supplies continue to be a problem. Um, we're doing things differently, and it's going to we needed a lot more equipment than we originally anticipated. Um, at the time, of, well, I should say the budget. The budget hadn't changed for several years, so that, that's incorrect. We, we need more equipment than we had. We've been purchasing that equipment, and we will continue to do that. Um, that's the lab thing. We are. Um, we've gone wireless, and we. Electronics. We're, we're doing the testing, the testing on at the site, at the water site, and there's no um, jotting it down on a piece of paper and bringing it back to the plant and then wondering what did I, you know, you don't have to, did somebody write it wrong? Did somebody? It's we're 100% um, wireless now with, with all our readings from actually from water and sewer. We're doing all our tests. That internet is good. Can I continue? Connected to the internet, the wireless. I was just hearing something on NPR about vulnerability to Russian hackers. <laughs> the water systems being uh, they want to know how much being hacked. They want to know they can we don't have automated. We're not we're automating the system as it's run. Right? So the set, well, the system, um, from the water system as well, we've made some changes where um, we're getting more consistent water, um, and that's because. The well that for 10 years everyone's been afraid of, uh, which is the well uh, order. order, everyone's been afraid of because it, um, it, it's complicated. Um, we're now running it five days a week instead of seven days a week. We're now getting a better blend of water in the, in the, you know, throughout the system. Um, but to bring that well up and running the way that it needs to be running, we had to do some electrical you know, communication making, making changes to get that now. And then the new well that we brought in, um, we're seeing is using more electricity. And wait, I'm surprised nobody said anything about that yet. But our electric costs have gone up up there. And that's our new pump and our new well, and we didn't have any history with that. So now that that's up and running, the new, more efficient, low E pump seems to be using more electricity than the uh, old one that was running more, so we're not quite sure what's happening. Work in progress. Yeah. John, were you, were you asking whether the water and sewer had operational systems that were connected to the internet, internet such that they could be vulnerable to hacking? I did make that. I was. Yeah. Out of half. And is the answer yes? They or? could. Our reporting could be hacked, but it's reporting directly to the state. I think that's different than... Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, only yeah. They couldn't shut down the water. Yeah, they can't know. shut down the water or no, shut down no, the sewer. That's, that's, that's the vulnerability. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. That, no, we have a, we have a system. Um, I understand, yeah. John. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no. It was, it was, that, a, it was half was a chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> so we're entirely wireless, though, yes. We'll leave it that. Any other questions with water? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do one thing with water. Next year, do we anticipate anything? Yes. Um, Woolley Street continues to be a problem. Um, Woolley Street has had, is, it basically has the lowest pipe in the system. Goes down, you know, it goes beyond the, the school and drops down and comes back up. 
Um, we've had a, we've been doing a lot of flushing in that area, and last year we did something called ice picking for the first time. And it's a slurry that gets blown through the through the pipe at a high velocity to try to capture all the particles that are in the pipe and, and whatnot. It, it's only a band-aid, um, and it, it helps us for a while. The flushing helps us for a while. So engineering study that we're, that we're working on right now is going to address what we're going to do with that, that pipe, because that pipe is a problem. Um, we've actually got an auto flusher that we can program that will let some water out. It's not a hard flush, it's considered a soft flush. So, yeah, we got, that, that's going to be a big thing on the water side. Uh, as well as our corrosion control. We do, I, I mentioned that we wouldn't have information until November. Um, we've got a grant with the um, state. It's a, a $40,000 program for which we only pay 20. State pays 20, we pay 20. And that's going to help us a lot. Uh, we may be introducing uh, a chemical into the system that many other communities use. And, and what that chemical does is it latches on to the um, corroded uh, the corroded pipes. It's, it's, it's um, not lead, not copper, it's uh, iron. So it will, it, what happens is the chemical will latch on to the iron and it will, it will basically coat it so that the iron is, is, it is less of a problem. Many many, 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 many other towns do it, but we're looking at the pros and cons of doing it. Um, maybe we don't have to replace that pipe as soon. Um, the, the concern that we have is, okay, we've got one pipe that's got a problem. Right now, last week, we were looking at, okay, how many pipes are constructed that way in the town? How many do we really have to address? And what's the best way to address it? Is that chemical, but it's flushing, short term? Is that chemical? Um, then there's an epoxy type item that they can coat the pipes with. We might end up with a five, ten year plan to coat all the pipes that are like that. Goes in and cuts out the inside of the pipe, coats it, and then they tell us that they're good for 99 years. I don't know if I can do that. Um, so those are the things we're looking at. That's, that's the water side. Okay, so a question. Question, the engineering study that you mentioned for the, the pipe, is that something that you're doing this year in this budget, or is that something you're going to need? That's this year in this budget. The engineering study is going to be That study to do in November, which is why you're going to have uh, scrambling to get the budget ready for December. Right. Well, we, have, we actually have two. We have that, and we have an um, asset management program that's helping us as well. So between the two, we're looking at one. Uh, the asset management program is Suicide. So we're working on the water and the sewer. But that's why we have two separate budgets. So, what do you think folks like to know about the sewer? Maintenance and repairs. Maintenance and repairs. <laughs> what happened there? Oh, um, <laughs> in March, we, fr we froze up. I think I, I think I might have hit on this last time. We froze up the Headworks uh, building. The Headworks is the, where all the influence, um, all the gifts come into the plant. <laughs> and the heating system went down. Um, luckily, we were 100% reimbursed for that, with, with, with the exception of like $219. So we're not really at 68%. <coughs> so we're actually in good shape at the end of the year. Um, Was that insurance you were reimbursed for? Uh, and that's not in that budget because you, you know, so it has to, it has to be added and then. Next and actually, I believe we may have to have a meeting to be able to do that. We have to check with our people on that. Uh, okay, so then maintenance and repair was 5650. Um, there's also something going on in the Headworks area. There's a company from Germany that developed, the company's name is Huber or Hubber. And they developed the, or, or designed and put in the, the, the pressing device that presses the gifts that we get. Um, and that has a, that had a major problem. 
So we did some work to that, and now we've got some more work we're going to be doing towards the end of the year. Um, we are, again, we have a 14-year-old system that's supposed to last about 20 years. That's why we're really looking at things, kind of like we're looking at the town hall. We have to look at things and we have to see what it's really going to cost us to do what we have to do to, you know, operate smoothly. Um, professional services is, I believe, way over, isn't it? That was the engineering, and that is actually in the wrong area. Um, some of the engineering, or the engineering that's being done, was actually a warrant article item. So that's going to be removed. The engineering got put in there by mistake. So that was warrant article that was the year before his money that was unavailable. So the warrant article money is never in the budget. It's that's about all I've got. So with all the other um, maintenance and repair stuff that you see for the remainder of the year, do you think you still come in? We can't we can't predict. You can say I it mean, today, but tomorrow I mean, might change. I mean we had we had a tree come down in the last storm. And you know, we we looked at you know, our area and the questions that I was asking today were, hey, is that tree in our land? Is that tree in someone else's land? We've got to go look at that. Um, and we've got to, and we're looking at taking maybe another layer back of trees. Um, because it, some of those trees are so tall they could end up in our ditches. So, and the ditches are the first place that the gifted water shows <laughs> after, after it comes I up. love that. I have a question. It's just a large question based on, I don't know what I heard you say, but it's just, I'm just curious about this. Yeah. The, the separation of water and sewer, is, is that mandated? Is that something you do because it's just easy water, for you? Water and sewer used to be separate for many, many, many years. Separate entities. Separate, separate entities. And they were combined in this, like 1973. Hmm. Um, and I don't know enough about it. Yeah, I, I mean, just it's something you said just is it after that. Are there advantages to having to, to merging? Absolutely. The data? There are there are so. advantages, but there are certain challenges because to have one superintendent do mm -hmm. both of those things is so you have two superintendents, one for one. one. Usually, used to be, yeah. uh, usually there's two superintendents and we have one. Mm -hmm. And and I think it was in the nineties. Yeah, I'm not sure. There were, there were things that happened in the 50s, the 70s, and the 90s. So, so all, all I can no, tell I you know. is it, it's, it's mind-boggling what that, what the superintendent, we, we're so happy with the new superintendent, because that's great. Yeah. Um, great. So, that's all I got. I guess that's no more questions. Is there any other business that we had? Second. Second. Um, I don't know. You didn't say that loud enough, Joe. No, was, that a, was that a motion to adjourn? Yes, there was. Is that a second from Kim? Kim yeah. heard that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. It was a really important. <laughs>